This is your Bar Business Today evening news update for Tuesday, February 8th. Legislators today stamped the approval on the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2022, which makes way for two opposition senators to be represented in the Senate and for an 18-year-old to become a member of the upper chamber. Attorney General Dale Marshall insisted move to allow the political party with the second highest votes in a general election, in this case the Democratic Labour Party, the opportunity to appoint two senators in a case where there is no leader of the opposition, is an attempt to give the party a voice in the country's affairs. That for the purposes of deepening our democracy, we should, we should stipulate that that should be governed by some political nuances. And that's what we are trying to provide for in this context. Now, the opposition Democratic Labour Party has said we don't have the power to make any offer. Let me make it clear, we are not offering anything. But as the government, we have the power, we have the capacity to structure our constitutional arrangements in such a place that what we are thinking of could be offered. And that's all that we're doing. We're seeking to amend the constitution to provide, Mr. Speaker, that in any instance where either the president or the prime minister or anybody else has a duty in the constitution to consult or to get advice from the leader of the opposition, where there is none, where there is no leader of the opposition, you have a duty then to go to the opposing party with the highest number of votes. The AG also addressed the amendments relating to the age of eligibility for the House of Assembly and the Senate. Currently, that age is set at 21. Under the Constitution Amendment Bill 2022, an 18-year-old citizen of Barbados will qualify to be appointed a senator, while any person 18 years or older who is a Barbadian citizen and resident is eligible to be elected as a member of the House of Assembly. 18 is the age of majority. In countries across the world, you can go off and fight in wars and sacrifice your life at 18. The time has come, sir, when we need to recognize that promising individuals, having achieved the age of majority, should not have an artificial ceiling placed above their heads that would determine how far they could go at the age of 18. And the Prime Minister has indicated that she proposes to appoint a, a young man to the Senate. And some may argue that this amendment is triggered by that. I would say that that is the occasion for the amendment. Because this is an amendment, sir, the time for which has undeniably come. Argentina's President Alberto Fernandez has ended a one-day working visit to Barbados, holding discussions with Prime Minister Mia Motley and leaders of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. Prime Minister Motley said the visit underscored the importance of deepening the bilateral relations between the two countries. In their discussions, both Prime Minister Motley and Fernandez expressed the need to advance efforts to realign the international financial system so as to alleviate the problems of foreign debt in low- and middle-income countries, as well as strengthen the strategic relationship between Latin America and the Caribbean. The discussions also dealt with the need for further cooperation to deal with the impact of climate change, particularly as it affects small island development states and the coronavirus pandemic. Following their meeting, the two leaders traveled to the National Botanical Gardens, where they planted trees to mark the occasion of the visit. We share many, many, many passions together, muchas pasiones. And as you said this morning, we speak the language of the North, but we are really the South Carolina. And therefore, it is up to us to make sure that that is closeness to the South Your ambassador did a very good job of looking in Barbados in the hearts and minds, looking at Argentina, in the hearts and minds of Barbados. Are you a top cap? Y ahora viene usted, así que fue... Pues, no,
In the latest COVID-19 update, there were 714 new COVID-19 cases on Monday from among the 2,674 tests conducted by the Bessa Santos Public Health Laboratory. Of the positive cases, 150 people were under the age of 18 and 564 were 18 years and older. Persons in isolation facilities numbered 158, while 12,300 were in home isolation. Two women, aged 38 and 63, died from the virus on Monday. They passed away while at the Harrison's Point isolation facility and were both unvaccinated. The death toll currently stands at 288. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news in Jamaica, a leading medical official is reiterating calls for the government to legislate mandatory vaccination for frontline workers. Associate Professor at the School of Public Health at the University of Technology, Dr. Alveston Bailey, contends it's critical at this time if the country is to get out of the pandemic. We need to add COVID-19 to the childhood immunization list. In my opinion, mandatory vaccination must be legislated for frontline workers such as healthcare workers, civil servants, members of the security and emergency services, and other high-risk groups. But the most important issue on the table is to provide tangible incentives for people to become vaccinated. Dr. Bailey is also cautioning Jamaicans not to become too complacent with the decline in daily COVID-19 cases. He says the country is now at the peak of the fourth wave positivity rate had reached up to 70% on the 13th of January. It is now trending slowly downward. But for the past five days, we have stubbornly remained at 25%. We are very far from the 5% that we hope to achieve. In my opinion, this can only be achieved through widespread vaccination. Further afield in Madagascar, at least 20 people are dead and 55,000 have been left homeless after a cyclone slammed into the island's eastern coast. The World Food Program has warned that the cyclone destroyed staple crops, paving the way for a food crisis. Cyclone Butsarai brought with it heavy rains, strong winds, death and destruction. The tropical storm weakened as it moved across Madagascar, but not before causing serious damage. Thousands of buildings destroyed or flooded across the island. It's already Southern Africa's second biggest cyclone this year. Residents of Mananjari, the epicenter of the storm, are still waiting for help. Our house collapsed. We don't know where to go. We have no food. We have nowhere to go. All our things were in our house. The children's clothes, school, supplies, everything was destroyed. We have to help everyone, whether they live on the beach or in the city. We really have to find a solution. The World Food Program warned the cyclone destroyed staple crops, making a food shortage crisis in the months to come almost inevitable. We know for sure that the rice field and rice crops will be damaged, will be lost. So this is the main uh, uh, main you know, crop for Madag Malagasy people is, and they will be seriously affected in their food security in the next three, six months if we don't do something immediately and we don't help them to recover. An estimated 150,000 people have been affected so far. More than three quarters of Madagascar's 28 million people live in poverty. Aid workers are expecting the number of affected people to go up. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook.
and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.